Let me read to you a passage from the first chapter of St. John's Gospel, verses 43 to 51. It's the Gospel for Thursday before the Epiphany. St. John writes, Jesus decided to go to Galilee, and he found Philip. And Jesus said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the town of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and told him, We have found the one about whom Moses wrote in the law, and also the prophets, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. But Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come from Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said of him, Here is a true child of Israel. There is no duplicity in him. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered and said to him, Before Philip called you, I saw you under the fig tree. Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered and said to him, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than that. And he said to him, Amen, amen, I say to you, you will see the sky opened and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. That's from John chapter 1, verse 43 to 51. What does this suggest to us? Well, according to St. John's account of the first meeting between our Lord and some of the twelve, it took them very little time to recognize that he was the long-awaited Messiah. We will try to appreciate the significance of this. The true Hebrew entertained a great expectation of the Messiah, for the scriptures made it plain that the Messiah was to come, and that through him God would establish his kingdom. The hopes of salvation held by the true Israelite were pinned on the Anointed One. We remember the saintly Simeon and the prophetess Anna, who looked forward to the coming of the Christ. Our Gospel scene that I read, just read a moment ago places us at the threshold of our Lord's public ministry in the immediate aftermath of his own baptism and of John the Baptist's identification of him as the Messiah. We are told in our passage today that our Lord found Philip, implying that the initiative, in Philip's case, came from our Lord, who invited him to follow me. John chapter 1, verse 43 to 51. It seems that Philip responded immediately and told Nathanael that we have found the one about whom Moses wrote in the law and also the prophets, Jesus. So Philip had quickly and definitively arrived at the truth about Jesus. Jesus of Nazareth was the fulfillment of the law and the prophets. Our gaze then turns to Nathanael, to whom Philip had given his testimony. Nathanael seems to have been doubtful in view of our Lord's town of origin, but again, it did not take long for Nathanael to decide that Jesus was the Son of God, the King of Israel. At his first encounter with Jesus, in a matter of seconds, he attained the very goal of John's Gospel, which was that it might be seen that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing this you may have life in his name. John chapter 20, verse 31. How do we account for this speedy acquisition of divine faith on the part of the first disciples mentioned here? We are given an important clue in the very words of our Lord as he sees Nathanael approaching him. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said of him, Here is a true child of Israel. There is no duplicity in him. Nathanael was a person who lived in the truth and would have nothing to do with anything but the truth. He was disposed from the depths of his heart to accept and to perceive the truth, and especially the truth coming from God. That is to say, fundamental dispositions have everything to do 
with arriving at the truth about God, and in particular about Jesus. So very much depends on where we are coming from, on our fundamental starting points, on what we regard as truly important, on what we are expecting, in a word, on our basic dispositions. The good man will differ in these respects from the one who is not good. The problem is that we are generally quite unaware of where we are coming from. This is something only God knows because he alone sees our hearts. Therefore we must pray that God will gradually give us the right starting points, the right first principles and basic assumptions that will direct us to the truth of Christ. All the testimony in the world about Christ will not help us if our tastes, our preferences and our will is not properly disposed. That having been said, at the same time what is also evident from our Gospel text is that the testimony of others played a very important part in bringing these first disciples to Christ. In our case today it was the testimony of Philip that led Nathaniel to Jesus. In Yesterday's Gospel passage, it was the testimony of Andrew that led Simon, his brother, to Jesus. So then, let us pray for grace to be good soil, open to the seed that is the word of God, and for others to be good soil too. Let us also pray that we shall be open to the testimony given to us, especially by the Church, our Mother, and by all those who have come to know the Lord. Let us also pray that others will be moved by the grace of God to listen docilely to the testimony of Christ, the testimony to Christ offered to them during the course of their life. If a person is properly disposed and open to the church's testimony, he will discover the God of Revelation.